Good morning, and I am in a small town in Portugal. Really pretty. Look at the ceilings, the wood. Wow. Good morning. <laughs> I love the smell. The smell of eucalyptus. It's much stronger at night, definitely, when it, after the rain. How many doggies do you got? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> They're so sweet. Making up for Buddy. Hello there, pretty kitty. Hi there, kitty kitty. Are you coming to say hi? Are you exploring? So this is the room I'm staying in. It has a beautiful wood roof. This is amazing. And look at this. It's all rock, minerals. There's definitely quartz in it. Um, it's just amazing workmanship, you know, like, and then look at this. This is like a stone and I'm loving the details. And I was just complimenting on this place about that just the layout is gorgeous. So the bathroom and the shower and it's a combined with the room I'm in. So you can walk around the wardrobe in there. And then I also have like a door that goes outside, which is nice because I don't have to bother. There's a woman that's doing a healing session with tuning forks in the other room in the kitchen. So yeah, this is my sleeping accommodation through the, I know, look at my suitcase. I don't even want to pa unpack it. And to the 20th of September, when I go to Spain. Oh, wait, I told you. Ooh, but it wasn't just that big of a surprise. So I have this little, I have this sweet puppy. This is Estrella and this kitty kitty. Meow, meow. It's like my little guardians. Animals always show up to check on me and uh, guard me and protect me. I love, love, love that the doggies are here. It's so cool. It's like homage to Buddy. So we're gonna go explore, he's gonna show me around. We're near Portimao. I'll show you the other side of the house. There's a eucalyptus tree behind the house. You can't even see it. And when we arrived last night, it smelled amazing. Like if you've ever been to a spa and they use eucalyptus, especially my favorite is when it's a, a wet spa, a wet sauna. And so you've got the wet sauna and it just, they use the eucalyptus oil and it's just so refreshing and so healing. Um, so good for your sinuses, especially if you have issues with breathing. Um, and my grandmother used to have eucalyptus outside of the front of the house when we were growing up. And it's an old Portuguese thing, you know, protects from evil spirits. It clears and cleanses the air. It actually keeps a lot of the bugs away too. And my understanding is the eucalyptus leaves are great for weeds because wherever they land they keep anything else from growing so i'm gonna go prepare myself so we can go explore and i can decide whether i'm going to rent a car or time will tell Ooh, look at these wetsuits because it's so cold in the the water he said that you need a wetsuit because it's kind of cold so i might be getting one of those too and those are the three dresses that i purchased I may, I may decide to wear one of these. I don't know. I don't know how how warm. It's actually not supposed to get higher than, I think, 75 or something. So this is fun. I'm exploring. This is completely new for me. And I've never been to this area. And so I actually have a little nervousness because I'm not sure where I'm, what I'm going to see. But I'm also excited because this is, this is about inspiring me. Um... I've wanted to move to Portugal as well as with my father. So one of the things that I'm here for is to do a little reconnaissance, let's say. Check out the areas and see what they've got. Who knows? Maybe I find something while I'm here. Maybe I have to come back. But yeah, I have I have help. I have um I have a tour guide. I have someone on the ground who lives here. He's been here five years. And so I'm really blessed that I made that connection through my girlfriend. So thank you, Angel. Time to do a little exploring. What's the name of the city we're going to? Um,
I'd probably go to Sills. I think we should go there by Sills. Sills. That's a terrible pronunciation. <laughs> Sills. Not yours. Sills. Yeah, it's Sills. 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 Countryside views. I like the music. <laughs> There's another one of those songs. Like I was a bit of a, a bit of a purist after the university, but I should have gone into advertising because all my favourite songs ended up on adverts. It's like, oh, it's quite ridiculous how many of my mixtapes just ended nice. up like they were seeming like I was trying to make a bit. Mm -hmm. My favourite advert song was playing. That was used by Ikea in an advert. Oh my. It's, it's a Brazilian tree. And so I, I posted it on Facebook and said, Nick, New Thompson, New Planel, I can remember you saying this was your brother's favourite song. And her brother chipped in and goes, still is my favourite song. I even walked down the aisle to it. Oh, how lovely. And he walked down the aisle to got myself a good man now. so pretty quaint i'm sure there's a whole center over there and there's the old roman bridge i've been there i've stood on there and had a kingfisher flying over the bridge underneath the amazing blue color of the kingfisher kingfish oh ooh, ooh, look at the castle bird. up on the hill mm. hopefully you're getting the sights here Randomly taking pictures with the video in the car. So the tour of the Algarve comes to here. I think they call it the Orange Room. There's an awful lot of orange groves and stuff. Ah. As you head off into this valley here. Lots of orange groves over here. Wow, look at all the oranges. I hope someone picks them up. My gosh, that feels like such a waste. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Never go to waste. You can make orange liqueur. I haven't really got any surround bikes yet. And also they have a weird rule on round bikes. You can go all the way around the outside and have the right of way. Yep. Going up to the castle, you see the tops of the the torre, the towers. The architecture just fascinates me. I could anywhere I go, it's just like wow, you know. 
and, and supposedly we're more advanced technologically, right? And yet the architecture does not even compete in so many ways. for sale. <laughs> so there is where you get into the class. Uh huh. So pretty. from the distance, the castle, that we're, we were driving, but we can't go back that way, unfortunately. Sorry about the shakiness of my video. Yeah, when you're on sorry, the cobblestones, not, it's kind of hard to hold the phone. Oh, okay. it's all good, it's all good. It's, you know, this, these are the spontaneous adventures of Lana, you know. I literally decided I'm jumping on a plane and I'm just gonna wing it and go with the flow. And that's the way life should be, like, just follow your heart or let your heart guide you. Listen to the whispers of your soul, see where it takes you. Oh, my buddies. My bees are always showing up to me. So the story is that honeybees always find me, especially the queen bee. And that's kind of my nickname, queen bee. Queen bee. Yeah. So, um... I also have this pin that was my grandmother's. I have it with me, I'll show it to you later. It's this bee. She's got a little hat on, got a little skirt on. and she, It's tiny, it's about this big. And she's holding a little purse, it's very detailed. And it was my grandmother's. And she, and I, she gave it to me when I was really young, so I've had it you know, all my life. It's one of the few things I still have that didn't get lost somewhere, you know? Like my communion ring, it disappeared one day. And, I had a couple different things, my cross, my earrings, I had diamond earrings she gifted me. I had the, you know, the communion cross necklace and that disappeared. Um, it fell in our bathroom floor because we had an old house up in Maine and uh, it literally fell down into what was probably the basement of the house. Look at this architecture, all these mixes of new and old. And then, oh. Nice windmill to the left, Okay. Windmill coming up. <laughs> Exploring the country roads in Portugal. There you go, windmill ahead. Oh yeah, old fashioned windmills, not those big beasties. And so what is the name of this town again? Is this the Silves? If you can pronounce it properly, it's S-I-L-V-E-S. Silves? 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 We're not quite sure. We're trying to get that right. I, say, I have to take say, a course in Portuguese. Sil he says Sils. I know it's incorrect. Oh, look at the palms, the way that they're... Been trimmed. Yeah, they haven't been <laughs> trimmed, but it looks kind of cool. It does. It's really Ah, there's a cool bridge. Oh, it's that's so an pretty. So that's, got the that's an old that's aqueduct. Oh, my gosh. So they're, they're new working, so the whole... Like, so these, this oh, there's the solar panels, if you can see them. We looked to buy some property. Yeah. And it was... Um, yeah, you've got a, you've got a, like a canal. Yeah. It runs in your back garden and you can just take the water out of the canal. So that's like an irrigation canal. Oh, nice. That's free for all the farmers. You can use it for certain places. Nice castle view. Yep, another view of the castle. My hat went flying off in the back. <laughs> all right, you have got to see in those trees, if you can see it, the storks. This place has so many storks. Dom was pointing out as we were driving that if you looked into 
this one field at certain times of the day it's completely white from all the storks but you can't quite yeah it's hard to see them over there oh and i like that building up there looks really cool again architecture taking in the site sorry if it's too quick now we're going in the direction of Lagoa. Is that Lagos? Lagoa. 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 There's Lagoa and Lagos. Lagos okay. It's further west, like a hippie town. Um, Lagos is more hippie town? Yeah. Kind of like the Portuguese Glastonbury. Ah. Very gay friendly. Um, oh. We are going into to check out this Apollonia Supermercado, and I'm excited because. I like going into European supermarkets. We're going to have a guess the ham price competition. Guess the ham pr price competition, apparently. It's kind of like he said, it's like a Selfridges. Um, yeah, uh, I, I like the look of the outside because it's really, it's very modern and fancy. So come with me and you'll see. Look how clean this is. Look how beautiful. Even a wine tasting as you enter, how beautiful. I love this. I think this is cleaner than any market I've ever been into. <laughs> Very organized, tidied. We're in the liquor section. I, you know, I read on the airplane, Shadish Gin. Is this made here in Portugal, I take it? Um, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen that on the, the work on the shelf. Just beautiful. I love these bottles. I, I, it's all about the marketing. This is this is Ken, this, Kenneth Keats from Pointing Tito's. This to me. Because he's from Austin, Texas, and if that's the local vodka, so he's very proud of his local vodka. Oh, yes. They, people, people are proud pineapple of their rum. pineapple rum. I'm not a drinker, but this is kind of fun. Yeah, some of these, it's some just, of these could turn you into a drinker. You know, it's spirit called spirits for a reason. I used to love Sheridans. That was one of my favorites. This is the local. That's the Portuguese one. The Portuguese like liqueur. Medicinal one. Medicinal. Okay, yeah, like an herbal. Mmm. Oh, the ginja is made with the cherries. That's also very common here. It's served in these chocolate cups. He's getting bread. So this is Dominic. Say hi, Dominic. <laughs> do they do gluten free? Um, oh, look at how cool this is. These are folar de. Oh, I can't pronounce it, but this has chocolate. They're like they look like cups. The way that they're, I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at, but it's just really pretty. And then truffle bombs. Oh my gosh, you know me. I'm actually a foodie from way back, long before all my gluten free days. And there's marzipan. You can always, you can tell. You can always tell. He's, he just asked for gluten-free out of curiosity because I'm always looking. Look at this. Oh, waffles from Liège. Let me tell you, I used to live near Liège in Belgium. I was between Tongeren and Liège, and the best waffles are out of Belgium. And I mean the Belgian waffles. And they had these little crystals of sugar that were vanilla, and they just melt in your mouth. You have macaroons. Oh, we do have gluten-free over here. Low paleos. Look at this. Pa pa pao is paleo? Or am I? Pao is bread. Okay. Pao is bread. And you got Pachamama. Where does it say gluten free? How do you know? Ah, y, y Santo de Gluten. How cool is that? It looks like it's got rice, almond, and sesame. Is Amin Doin Doin almond? Amin Doin. And then it's vegetable fruit, uh, vestigios de frutos. Sorry. This is an exploration in gluten-free. So, oh, look at this. Baguette sounds gluten -free. That looks beautiful. Wow. See, there's always options. Oh, these, I, years ago, I did have those, yeah. And the, oh, meringue? Those are also great. Those are also great. <gasps> oh, I key bet. Flan cheese, no, these are, are cheesecakes. Key lime pie. Oh my gosh, this is a beautiful place, I'm telling you. This is, okay, so there's your marzipan. Oh, 
Those meringues, I bet, are delicious. That's gluten-free. It's just a lot of sugar and egg, egg white. Oh, not now. Another time. We'll, I'm sure we'll have time later. These are the big hams. See this? This is the, the legs of the ham. Okay. Presunta paleta. Okay, this is the guess the price. Which okay. one am I guessing? Oh my gosh, I'm seeing 200, this one, this one here. 296 price. euro. Cinco Totas. Totas. Um, that's one of the bigger brands, name brand. It's, it's, I mean, it's a brand thing. Well, it is a brand thing because it's an electric brand. 685. 919. 919. Euros, yeah. Wow. I wonder how long it's been aged. It, it always has to do with the aging, the you know, the brand, the, the quality, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have the goat cheese. I'm not here to recommend or, or to, in, in, to push that you should or shouldn't do cheese or dairy or any of that stuff. I'm just showing you what is old school, beautiful, artisanal. You have options across the spectrum because also over in here, I just saw, they have the alternatives. They've got the Vio Life. Like this is popular in the U.S. We have that's an American brand, if I'm not mistaken. And these are all free from dairy, gluten, lactose, and palm oil. So they've even got better, higher quality as far as. Mm, yeah, they've got options. Yeah. I just don't do tofu. <laughs> they even have Beyond Burgers. How crazy is that? Now, I don't advocate for the Beyond Burger. I think it's a bunch of chemicals. It's a shitstorm, just like a lot of other things in the, um, let's say, the vegan community. But th that's just been my experience because I've it, I've dabbled in everything. The marmalade they make from that quince tree. Oh my gosh, that's a marmalade made from the quince. I think so, and it's got the nuts in it. Oh wow! So this is stuff that you would get for like a. Cuterie board or cheese plate or a cheese board. Um, you can mix and match with the marmalades and all this. Oh wow! Look at that. See, I I love to dabble and just explore. And back in the day, before I did the whole food plant based and the raw vegan, and I was never a hundred percent. In my opinion, I don't think there's such a thing as a hundred percent. But uh, I did it because I was healing my body. And a lot of people reach out to me and ask me. Well, I thought you were vegan, and I'm like, you know what? Labels limit. Well, look at this marinating, all this meat. And you have to know what they're marinating in because I don't, I'm really picky about, like, ingredients. So, and I, I, I trust that, yeah, so Dominic and I are over here talking about food and stuff and reading ingredients and making sure there's no chemical things that are going to cause extra issues. And it's just, you know what? Intuitive eating, when it comes down to it, be mindful of your mind because mindset matters too because you're really nourishing yourself with your mindset and your belief systems like if you're already saying in your mind oh I shouldn't eat this it's not good for me but you're eating it anyway you're kind of ruining the experience it's all about experience and, and see yes of course they have the major brands over here because when they make it a lot of money <laughs> it's, it's almost like colonizing people with the food of America Oh, look at these. Ooh, decadent truffles. I love, like, I love packaging. That always gets me. Me and my sister, we love to pr collect these little cute little, you know, cups for the, we like the, the bowls, the glasses. We like all that stuff. So, yeah, this is really, my favorite part is when we get to the fruit and the veggies. Look at how beautiful. Ooh, look at the size of the... See, okay, here's my hand. This is a pomegranate. So look, my hand, the pomegranate's bigger than the size of my hand. And then, of course, my favorite are the avocados. Um, you can never have enough avocados in my house, as far as I'm concerned. And I've got another brand down here, a variety, different types, ready to consume. These are gorgeous. Look at the size of these. All the exotics, it's, it's my opinion that Food should come from nature. We should go back to our roots. 
and we got to get out of the boxes, literally. We even live in boxes, so that's not healthy for your your system. Biologically, we, you know, sacred geometry, there's, in nature, there's really no straight lines. Well, not a fully straight line. Look at the mushrooms. Uh, I'm a shroom girl. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> and then you have... Oh, I love those. Those are gorgeous. I love the heirlooms. The special tomatoes and all the root veggie, the roots. What's that? That's the oregano. Oh my gosh, I love it. I have some home at home growing. Mm. So you, you, Turmeric. You don't always get the, the flowery tops. So Ginger. Um, um, what do we call that? Huh? There's another name. It's um, yam. No, it's another name. It'll come to me later. Yeah, it's cassava. Cassava. Yeah. Yeah. There's a yam. And they've got all the all the shallots and garlic and onions. All this goody stuff. Melons and peaches and nectarines and apples. Watermelons. <gasps> oh, dragon fruit. See, now, see, and then, and I get, and, and the maracuya, which is much more expensive in the U.S. and you, very hard to. Oh, they already have persimmons. Do you know this is one of my favorite fruits? Is persimmons. These are not even in season in the states yet till till like December. Like the, they're a winter fruit. Like where are these coming from? Do they? Are these that come from Spain. These are coming, the kumquats are coming from Africa. Mangosteens, guayba, not guava. I've never had the tamarillo. Oops, I'm dropping stuff over here. We've got papaya, plums. I've never had a tamarillo. Um, time to try one. I guess I'm getting a tamarillo. Okay, and there's dried figs. Did I miss anything? All the beautiful grapes. Ooh, cherries, of course. Hey, Dad. 40 bucks for a kilo of cherries. I think we're better off finding them when they're in season. And these are figs. Oh my gosh. Figs for $16.99 a, a kilo. They're beautiful. All right, I'm going to get a tamarillo. I think one is maybe two. Should I get two? Okay. And we're going to go. Oh, look at that table. Herbal teas. You know what I really love? Is they have the flowers. Edible flowers. I love that. Yummy, yummy. Okay, we're going to go check out now. Do I have to get this a sticker on this? Or they know to look it up? Oh, that'd be okay. Okay. So just to be... I'm just going to walk down here. But this is a gluten-free aisle. All of this stuff says gluten-free. Not all of it, maybe. But, um, yeah. How neat is that? We're going to check out now. And there's a lot of stuff that's coming from the U.S. All right, I just bit into this. What did I say? It was a maracuyo? Or no, tomatillo. Oh, no, seeds. Mmm. The further you get into it, the sweeter it is. But when I first started eating it, it felt bitter. But I also bit into the skin. Take that out and throw it out. I don't think... So this is like a wetland. You get lots of egrets and there's some... Mm. Ah. At least it goes in the back seat. It's sweet in the center. There's a little bit more bitterness on the outside. It's actually pretty good, but I could not tell you that it compares to anything in particular. Le Creux is supposed to be one of the best tapas places, and this is a touristy little area here. Look at that sunshine. This is a Indian Nepalese. Oh, I bet they have good food. That's my guess. The architecture, the beautiful buildings. It's so pretty over here. It's a good time to come this time of year. September is less of the summer traffic, obviously, as most people have to go back to their livelihoods. So this is Coviero, right on the sea. 
so, so pretty out here. Look at the cliffs off in the distance. Looking for my cappuccino coffee bar. And then I'm going to go a little exploring. <laughs> and look at that church. Oh, what pretty pastels. And Those cliffs are gorgeous. Oh my gosh. It's so surreal, such a dream, you know? To avoid the walk down the hill. That's cool. Yeah. So you know how to get back up there, you want to do that cliff walk. Uh-huh. Oh wow, yeah. It'd be a good walk for me. So you're gonna have to get the coffee at the bottom and then come back up. That's okay. I don't mind. I'll have so plenty of time. First, it's pretty much the first turning right. To the ATM and the shopping area here. Just head up the hill. Via Italia. All those pretty flowers. Gato de Rua project. Vernon. They have a Portugal Sotheby's, of course. They won't be great value, but Central you might just Cafe. Have a coffee in the, in the center here. There's one right here. You want to drop me here? Yep. I have been left to explore on my own. And let's get a cappuccino at this pretty little space here next to the Bogan Villa. Central Cafe. You know how I love my cappuccino. You know I gotta have my cappuccino. Now this is a cappuccino. It's crema broth. Yummy. It's nice and hot. I like my cappuccino hot. I don't like it when it gets cold. Mm. Oh, that's buono. Molto buono. And of course, you know, I brought these back with me from Italy. So, cheers to a beautiful day here in Brazil. Oh, wait, did I say Brazil? I meant Portugal. Mm. Cheers to a gorgeous day here in Portugal. In the Algarves. Pleasures in life is what it's all about. Embodiment, experience, being in the present. That's the gift of the now, the moment. Mm. Whatever brings you joy, do more of that. Because that's what it's about. from a little seaside place in the Algarve. Central Cafe. Sometimes it's just nice to be. Turned out to be a beautiful, gorgeous day, and I am over here with this long shirt on, but fortunately, because it's linen, the nice thing is, is that it's cool and airy and breezy, and there is a little bit of a crispness to the air because now we're on the seasonal transition of temperatures. So ahead of me is my friend Dominic, and we're just going to go up to the cliffs and take a nice long walk. Mm -hmm. Get something to drink to bring along the way. Look at all that beautiful fresh fruit. Mm, let's see if they get. You know me, figs. What do we got? 
You know, no figs right here, but I bet you I'll find them somewhere. I'll go for some water. Here we are, doing some beautiful sightseeing in this seaside city, in the Algarves. I love the sidewalk. Of course, I'm going to walk on the street. <laughs> So how was your day? That's all right. That should be okay. I'm very happy I've got tomorrow off. The cats. Or tomorrow morning off. The kitty oh, cats. <laughs> and you see the spray coming off of the sea. Isn't that amazing? So gorgeous. We're going to go up and show you the cliffs from above. Oh my goodness, how beautiful. The fresh smell, the air. Really picked up that seaweed. I can smell it. <laughs> it's quite a seaweedy beach. It's not really quite that bad. When I was younger and lived in Maine, my mother would take us to this friend's home that had a sauna. And we would sit in the sauna. I was really young too at the time. And then run across the street into the, the ocean of course, cold like this, right, Atlantic. And then afterward, they would prepare seaweed and all this, you know, very, I don't know if it was uh, microbi macrobiotic or what kind of food, but there was seaweed in the food and it was delicious. I just, those are my first memories of having. It's a great iodine source. Yes. My son, when he was, you know, when he first started eating solids, I'd give him uh, scrambled eggs made with butter and I'd add some seaweed to it. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> oh, look at that seaweed down there. I mean, like, seriously. Wow. So, at the lower tide, that cave on the, on the Off in side. the center, see where my that finger's that pointing? Yep. And the day when we kind of arrived after the storm. And it's completely full of perfect clam shells. It's loads of just the whole, you know, the, the kind that people spend the whole day on the beach looking for, just there by the bottom. Wow, I believe that's probably amazing. Collecting the shells. Wow. That's crazy how much seaweed. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about seaweed over here. And over the years, when people have dumped off the stuff, turned into a type of toxic algae bloom. That's... Almost lost my white hat. And then I brought it back to the States. It ended up fine, you know, I didn't lose it on those, the really windy area. Yeah. And then meanwhile, I washed it recently and it totally disintegrated because it was made of paper. <laughs> it's just the funny stories that we have, like, we bring things back, and I here I am wearing a hat, and I'm going to take it off. So Algar originates from the Algar seco sector, comes from the Arabic word of Algar, meaning the cave, or from the Phoenician Lalgar, meaning abyss, referring to the variety of the shapes created by erosion from the sea. So the technical car term Algar means a natural well or sinkhole, and the Algar Seca was formed by a coalescence of several other sinkholes and deepened by wide and eros by erosion. So we're going to walk. There's 600 meters of walkway along here. Yeah, this is gorgeous. Ah, hopefully you don't get too much wind and feedback. I'm trying to use my microphone on this one. Look at these little ones. Oh! There's the way to go. And all that pathway in front of us. Look how pretty that color is. Uh, heaven, I'm in heaven. So it was a fortress That's built to prevent the landings of pirates. That's where you went. Is. You could see it in the haze. Uh huh. Hmm. From this and viewpoint, and looking west, one can see all the prominent promontories of the coastline. 
all the way to Sagres. If, if it wasn't hazy. If it wasn't hazy. Which is, the haze is created because of the evaporation and the mist of the sea itself, right? I think so, yeah. That's but also, th there's more looks. humidity in the air, so it wouldn't necessarily have a haze, but because it's been raining and there's loads of extra moisture in the air, it's close to All the wildlife, the birds. So we have an alpine swift I've been wondering that. Yellow legged gull, kestrel, peregrine falcon. Peregrine falcon. Joking. Yeah, northern bird gannet. Fastest bird in the world. Carmorant. Yeah. Yeah, that's we have them around me in, in you know, Florida they, too. You, have you ever seen the comparison it. of the, the peregrine falcon and the and the, the, the modern American air um, Air Force aircrafts? Like, like the, what, yeah, that was it. The B the B B two stealth. B two bomber or stealth. Yes. I'm not familiar. I'm not. I'm not yeah, a pilot, what, so I'm not that good. Fast stealth bomber. Its profile is exactly the same as a, as a, as a, as a peregrine falcon in when it's diving. Pizza restaurant, fantastic, but dreadful sweatiness in the air. Just the moisture is outrageous. On the Silver Coast, it's more humid. Humidity. Well, it's the mist. The silver refers to the mist. It's called the Silver Coast because it's, oh. because it's the, the way the mist rolls in. If you head out to the west coast from here, there are some days there's it's like a different, completely different climate. That is incredible. She wanders out. Like a tufo? It's like a tufo. I don't know what they look. What, what do you would you call it? sandstone? A type of the type of rock that's that yellowish. What did they say it was? I think it's. I think it's this. What did they say? Golden limestone? Did they say? All right, we're going down into that area. It is really windy, so hopefully I'm able to... You're able to tolerate those videos with the wind. I should have worn my other sneakers, but that's okay. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, there's a rope just in case you need it. It doesn't hurt to hold on. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to have these experiences without videoing everything, but it's hard to not want to share this, <laughs> right? <sighs> yeah, I don't need to go all the way down for sure. I'm good up here. Looking into these rocks, you see all the shells that are part of it formed as it hardened and they're deep, deeply a part of each other. How cool is that? So Algarves, remember caves, the abyss. How neat is that? Just little nooks and crannies all up in there. That's so cool. And they have the succulents growing in, right? I know, fun. Not the world's spookiest thing. <laughs> see these cool succulents growing in amongst the, the coral and the shells and uh, nature's so amazing, I love it. Peeking through the holes and the patterns. So what makes this blue color? Um, maybe someone's putting some paint. Oh, someone brought paint up here, you think? I don't know. I see the blue. I don't know. Interesting. My curious mind wants to know. And even there, you can tell where the water gets up higher. I see some seaweed down in there. Yeah. It's an explosion, it's wonderful. Oh, yeah. It's 
like when I was out in uh, Hawaii years ago and there's a spot along that's uh, called the toilet bowl because the way it comes in splashes up. I'd, I would almost want to call it like a kind of a bidet. Did you know you could keep going through here? Ooh. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna attempt this. Of course, there's someone coming at me. It's easier to go this way. I'm gonna go. That's okay, I don't mind. I'm happy right here. Sometimes I don't need to always go all the way. I'm just appreciating it from afar. Yeah, it's so beautiful. So when I was a little kid, I was the one climbing everything. Well, actually me and my sisters. Just looking up around and it's just how much beauty. And you see the coral, that pink. It's incredible. Nature is amazing. I re one of the reasons I don't really necessarily need to go all the way toward the edge is because when there's a bunch of people, I just rather appreciate it on my own, you know? And so it's like, oh, there's people. There's, it's, it's kind of ruining my experience on a level, you know? Not saying that I don't like people. I, I like to people watch. Sometimes it's nicer when it's more peaceful and it's just you, you know? Nature cleansing and clearing, constantly removing. What goes out must come in, what comes in must go out. The cycles. So in case you're wondering, that's the drop off. I know some people are afraid of heights. Yeah, not so much. So you have to give people a reward for, for their walk along the coast and place a bar, a place where they can sit and take in their, their spoils for their day. <laughs> so gorgeous. Do you know what this herb is? Nothing in particular of a smell. Everywhere I smell eucalyptus though in the pine. It's wonderful and refreshing. It's like clean, fresh air from nature. You know, the plants, the trees, they're the ones that alchemize and take the CO2 and turn it back into oxygen. So if you ever hear somebody say we have an issue with the CO2, the carbon footprint, uh, uh, you need carbon. And that's what the cycle of life is about, is taking that carbon and alchemizing it back. That's what nature does. Nature knows how to nurture. Nature does nature well. I don't know why humans think that we can do it better, which is hilarious to me. Oh, how gorgeous is this? Knobby. It's a knobby obstacle. There's more trails and paths and making your way. A lot of agave ca cactuses around the way. I see that. <laughs> Ooh, look at that down there. Four nights later, I, I couldn't sleep. And it's about three in the morning, four in the morning, and I turned on um, Open University, this British stuff. And um, yeah, they were testing exactly my idea in Scotland, basically, basically a, a blowhole, 
and he's put a, uh, I think it's called a Phillips turbine that works both ways. And so you have the water forcing air into a, into a chamber up through a tube and spinning the turbine and the, just the air and the water spin the turbine. Yeah, four days after I thought I'd come up with a great idea, it turned up on late night TV that I happened to be awake. The collective collaboration that shows how connected we are. It's true. It, it's the idea, the idea that people think their idea is original when in reality it's a shared collective consciousness and somebody thinks of it and somebody also produces it and so somebody may turn around and say oh they stole my ideas. No, you just didn't produce it quick enough and it, it goes along the consciousness and gets shared in a way that somebody creates it and so that's the, that's a huge appreciation and recognizing well at least somebody's doing it oh, yeah, that's beautiful with my with my instrument i always felt like if someone else made it i just feel like i had a blood brother exactly <laughs> exactly just when i want to go up there <laughs> All the people chased us and followed us. <laughs> I love just the sound of the waves. To me, that's soothing. The negative ions, cleansing. Little, little cave areas like that where the water finds its way in. Same under here. A little Which toilet bowl. Well. Just oh, flushes like a toilet. <laughs> Nature's toilet. Oh, that's a true story, right? <laughs> it went calm and then this crashed all in. There it's gonna go all the way out and it's gonna come in stronger, you watch. Here it comes. See, it goes calm. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that blowhole. Another great thing about Portugal is this would be helping safety to death in the UK in most places. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have that lady stood there. They'd slippery rock. Yeah. True story. In perfect rock. People responsible for themselves, yeah. Okay, so now it went calm. Just give it a moment. Calm before the storm. What goes out must come back in. And what comes in must go back out. There it goes. That's going to rush back in at some point. It's all that seaweed. All that nutrient, minerals. Mm -hmm. Here it goes. Here it comes. Look at that swirl.
rough and wild sea, the water that cleanses the earth. I love it. This never gets old, in my opinion. Did you say it doesn't get old? No. I was literally about to say, it doesn't get old. It doesn't. You can just listen to that, smell it, and watch it. And every time there's a little burst of satisfaction for each splash, each. Mm -hmm. Like the spray over here. Yeah. Each wave comes in different. Never the same, always unique. Never one wave like another. And it's, and then it's gone. <laughs> I've always, I, I quite a, I love rivers and water. Like we went to a school camp when I was young. And I managed to sneak off from everyone else. And uh, I built a dam across the little river. Flooded off the campsite. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny and clever. Yeah. I love that. And then, then I got pulled off, and so I made it a spillway, so it just basically ended up in a swimming pond. But the teacher already told the, the stupid kids to destroy my dam, so they destroyed my dam. It's very well made that. So it required effort on their part to destroy it, I'm sure. Mm. You know, about 30 years later, I did the same thing. And it was in cold water in Wales, and I built this lovely dam. I made a lovely kind of swimming pond for this campsite. And I finished, and because the water was cold, you didn't realise that your fingers were wet. And every single finger I'd worn the ends off. And every finger was like a little, like, blood was pooling on the end of each finger. Really, quite a weird feeling. Ooh. It's like the water's dancing just for us right now. It's really doing all its swirls and magic and sprays and look at us look at it look at me i've got a better way they're competing it's so lovely to be able to get into it and know you're safe to kind of to have something that you can wrap around yourself and just let it toss you about and know that ultimately you can just pop out of it safely yeah but that's why people fear the sea so much right oh, because of that oh, that uncertainty Years ago, I went canyoning and I allowed myself to go into the water as I fell and I was being directed by somebody I should not have listened to. And as a result, there was a rock deep down into the water and I did not know that. She couldn't have known it either, but my tailbone tagged it. And so for the rest of that trip, I had severe pain on, the ta on my tailbone. And that was, that was not pretty. Yeah, no, I wasn't happy that about that right either. Now. Yeah. It makes you feel so sick to take tailbone. Oh. That's your root. That's your grounding. Yeah. Look at that. Five almost five minutes of gorgeous waves just dancing, delighting. And it's a shame you don't have smell of vision or the sense of the feel of the wind as it crashes. And the, this is just a sneak preview, preview of the Algarves and the gorgeousness that it provides. Mm. And heading back up. Yeah. Sure, surely this never gets old. And I love being by the sea. Here's the bar. I love that roof. <laughs> That's beautiful. This is a super cool bridge, but it's kind of hard to see it as clearly just because we got some raindrops coming down. So this How is the same pretty. river we were, we were going. We saw it sills. Uh -huh. It goes down to Port Mount. There's the city over to the left. Wow. Port of Mao on the seaside and there's 
a beach over here. Look at the sky. Explosion of cloud. <laughs> Exploring. Look at these pretty little, oh, I don't know, townhome, casitos, beach places. Huh. Oh, looky, looky, how pretty is this? The boats and the backdrop of the clouds and the colors. All these little shops. I like the colors of all the terracotta. So peaceful, so lovely. I'm enjoying this. Look at how calm that sea is on that side. I can only imagine when we get to the other side as the waves crash. I have to work on my Portuguese. This is so cool. This is a really cool little beachy town. This reminds me of a lot of the resort places down in Italy and all that I've been to different places. And uh, what do you call it, Greece as well. Look at that distance over there. Getting the sea spray. Oh yeah. Hello. Hi. How are you tonight? Lovely weather. <laughs> it's a perfect day. Yeah. This is beautiful. I'm loving the clouds off in the distance and the colors. Oh yeah. Yeah. I like this bar area. This is really peaceful. And piano bar music playing in the background. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, this is a nice seaside resort area for sure. And there's the other side of that place we just came out of. So pretty, the sand. Like, look at the color of that sand. It's so gorgeous, like look at this. It has like a pretty yellowish. Florida we have kind of a grayish no. where I live. Ah, oh, look at those clouds. Definitely animated skies since I've been here. Pure construction, discovery tours. I'm just following. <laughs> oh, nice. There's a boardwalk. Uh, a little calmer on this side, in this area. Look at those rocks. Oh, my gosh. We're talking cloud formations. Oh, the sand. It really is beautiful when you go up north and and you go out. Um, like Nazare was really nice. I really liked Nazare. And there was another place that my dad and I stopped. It's more, and I don't know exactly where we are. I have to look at a map specifically because I'm a little discombobulated. But are we down on the southern southern end yeah, on the south. bottom? So we can we can drive we can drive to the, the west coast. It takes about forty minutes. Okay. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, you got completely different beach. So cool. You see all that spray and these clouds and the smell again. The smell. It's like a very thick um, seaweed, very dense smell of seaweed. And it is really thick out there too. Somebody's got a surfboard. And that's one thing that they're most famous for over here, is the waves. 
there is a good be dangerous too. Here on the right days. It's not too often that the waves are moving the side. Mm -hmm. But me and my son were bodyboarding when he was five and he'd hold the, the little thing on the front and I'd hold the side. And there were pro surfers being filmed that day. And you've got oh, me and my cool. son on the bodyboard. <laughs> oh. Wow, look at the seaweed, how thick that is. Like we saw it from the top earlier. But especially like right out here. And the sand covering, you get this really spongy sand there. It's quite, yeah. It's quite cute. Spongy sand. Wow, look at how thick that is. Is it always this thick? I, I mean, I've been no, here. No, 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 this is because of the way. Oh, because of that hurricane that came through. So apparently, that was one of the reasons for my delay. Is the understanding was there was some um, tail end of a of a uh, hurricane over here. I, was that on the Lisbon side? Like. Or was this the entire coast? So it came down from Lisbon. Okay. Splish splash, I was taking a bath. Ba -da -da. And so there, at the very end of here, there is, as you can see, a white and red striped. Oh, wow. Look at this. Uh, you, you know what? The, the video doesn't do it justice but it's still gorgeous. Part of the sun setting. Wow. What a deep break. Yeah, it is. If, the, if we get a more clearing, we might even get more. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit better. That's good, that's, that is sunset. That's just that. Oh, that's so pretty. Of the waves about to crash over. So yeah, all this seaweed is because of the the storms. Believe it or not, it's a little chilly, so I'm actually grateful that I wore my long sleeve shirt instead of my summer dress. Peaceful, I love it. As you can see over here on the left, there's also another Lighthouse. So over there it's is green and white. Fer what is so it? This is Portomayo, and that's Farragudo. Farragudo is over there it's in that there. little inlet. So you can see, so that's the river that goes all the way to Sills. Okay. And under the bridge that we went up over. And that's oh, I can see the bridge there, yeah. And that's, oh. that's Farragudo, and they've got a very nice um, bar there. It's getting seen, right? But I've seen a really good band there twice called Os Compotas, which is the jam in Portuguese. Mm -hmm. They're just such talented musicians. They'll play kind of really lovely James Brown, Sly and the Family Stone, do it really, really well. Nice. And then the next night they'll be playing like Portuguese Fado, like the lead singer, just, you know, multi talented. But that's one of my dreams is to play with them. Oh. <laughs> really, I even made them a playlist. And, like these songs, I think you have, you would like them. Maybe you haven't heard them. And mm. the second time I think, um, meaning like if the ash blossoms before the, uh, the birch blossom before the ash, you get um, you're going to have a, a a dry year. Mm. Talking about the different sign signals of nature that cl clue you in and cue you into changes and. Mm -hmm. in and expectations like uh, what kind of seasons will be like or if you've got the rain coming in and we were just looking at the sky and if you look it actually has kind of a circular thing going on there it looks like a storm coming in oh check out this little birdie look at you crab. It's 
If you're chasing a crab, I think you'd be snipped. Yeah, a little popper, but... <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. I love these, uh... The rocks. Yeah, so cool. Yeah. Like, who made those? You know? How did that all get formed and when? That's my mind. I get curious by things like this. I don't know when they built this. It wasn't that long ago. Because this beach is kind of an artificial beach. So oh, kind of artificial. Yep. Unfortunately, they messed up the, the sardine um, the sardine hatcheries. Oh. So whereas this would have been, like Portimao, when my friend came here 25 years ago, Portimao was just like a, and there were loads and loads of these just tin and tin huts for the fishing um, processing and sardine. Oh wow. Sardine processing. But yeah, the, I think when they formed this beach, they moved sand and the, the sardine hatcheries were ruined and so they'd never really come back. So, mm, what a shame. Nice beach, but it came with a cost. See what happens when man gets involved? Messes with nature, unfortunately. It's not forever. Exactly. Mm. Nature wins in the end. Always. Finishing up on the beach. It's time to find some food. It's a little chilly. Feel the moisture, the humidity going into your bones. But such pretty lighting and coloring. And then I just realized I have to find a cobbler because my shoes are separating. <laughs> yeah. I guess I have to go through the sand anyway. <laughs> Fortunately, he said he knows a cobbler. Look at this eucalyptus. Wow. The smell here is amazing. I'm like, I'm just happy when I get to smell a eucalyptus. So we're at a restaurant for dinner tonight. Really pretty colors. Ooh, this might be a little sick. This is Casa Dora. Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Beautiful. Are you good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've business been since we took over. Yeah. Pretty good? Yeah. Had a good summer, that's great. It's nice. You want inside or outside? Inside. I think inside, yeah. yeah. It's, cold it's a little otherwise. cold. <laughs> mm, smells good. It's beautiful. It smells like a Portuguese thing. And it's got translation to English as well. Just a little <laughs> oh, the eucalyptus, the first thing you walk out of the restaurant. Look at this. Oh my Look at this goodness. puppy. Oh that was really no. yummy, really oh lovely. And now I'm so wiped out. I'm going to go oh back and go yeah. to sleep. Oh.